Hello and welcome to BT Media's In Conversation with series. Today, I'm delighted to welcome Claudine Collins, Chief Client Officer at Mediacom, the UK's largest media planning and buying agency. Good morning and welcome, Claudine. Good morning, Dan. Thank you for having me on. And hello, everybody. Hello. It's an absolute pleasure. I used to work with Claudine. What are we now? It was probably like 22 years ago. Yeah, don't say it. Just, just a while ago, Dan. <laughs> a while ago. A while ago. Which is actually goes into my first question. So you've been at Mediacom and before that the media business for let's say 20, 20 or so years. 25, actually, yes. Um, silver wedding anniversary. Yeah. Um I keep reminding you... them. Sorry. I keep reminding them. <laughs> 25 years, you get presents. Yeah, you want a big present. Yeah. What drives your passion and keeps you motivated to to do what you do and be with the same company for so long? Um, so it's funny because obviously, you know, when you are with a company for a long time, everyone always asks you that question. Sorry. And the truth of the matter is that I had no intention of being there for yeah. that amount of time. I just thought to myself, I'm going to go, I'll do two. I, I, had to, I had been to, I know I looked too young for this, but I've been to another agency before then yeah. for two and a half years. And I thought that's about right. I'm going to do two and a half years at the media business and then I'll move on. And I never left. And it's just an incredibly special place. Yeah. Right? It's, it's hard to articulate it, but there are two things about it in particular. One is that the culture is so about helping you to be your best, really. Yeah. Right? And you look after each other. People have a hard time. You get behind them. You look after them. And I've always found that. And I... I have one of my greatest friends I met the day that I walked into media form, Kath Crow. Yeah. You know, I was sitting next to her. She's one of my closest friends. So, you know, I've made a lot of friends there. And a lot of people have been at MediaCom for a long time because of that yeah. reason. Yeah. And therefore, that's why as you go through the ranks and you stay there for longer, you're working with your friends and you know they have your back. But I suppose more importantly or not more importantly but equally importantly is that every time I decided that I was a bit bored or I'd done that yeah. job or I wanted to do something different I was always given the opportunity to so I just moved on and on and on and I don't think there is anyone at Mediacom I mean we call it the place to grow because I really do believe that yeah. if you're in a job and you think I'm a bit bored with it or I could I really want to move up to the next level there is the opportunity to do that yeah. at Mediacom so um it's a very very special place I have to say yeah no it's interesting because obviously having been there <clears throat> I still sort of keep one eye on people's careers yeah you know people like Simon Ingram and obviously yourself and you mentioned Karen and and even Steve you know you've seen everyone yeah. and now Nick Lawson's taken you know, I remember yeah. 20, 20 odd years ago yeah. So in a funny way, even though you haven't moved business, because you've moved roles and you're still evolving, it's almost like you have you're doing something different every so often, right? It's not well, like when I joined well, when I joined media business, there were 50 yeah. people, yeah. right? And I was in the direct response department. Yeah. I became managing director when there were nearly a thousand people. I'm yeah. now chief part officer, yeah. there are thirteen hundred people. <laughs> so it is like a totally yeah. different yeah. agency. But as I say, the thing that they've kept is that culture and the thing that that, that we are all passionate about yeah. is being incredibly inclusive, diverse, having a, an inclusive culture. Um and so yeah, it, you know, yeah. it's a it's a special place. Your role at the moment, Chief Client Officer, what does that mean, please? <laughs> <laughs> it means that I, I'm responsible for leading the teams right. that keep the clients happy. Okay. So that if Quite somebody, important. I'll give you, uh, what's that? Quite an important role. Quite an important <laughs> role. So yeah. I tell you when I felt like I was doing a good job was yeah. when one of my clients said to me he, that he gets four approaches a week from different agencies wow. right. and he just bats them away yeah. right now that is what you want you want your client to think mediacom are so superior to everyone else yeah. and my relationships with the people i work with they honestly are like partners it's like they could be working in this office yeah. i wouldn't ever even have engaged in a conversation 
with another agency. Yeah. So my role is to come up with ways of working and to constantly be on calls and seeing clients to check that we are doing what they want us to do. Right. And is that the... It, there so, are about 250 clients, so it's quite a lot. <laughs> okay. And obviously you have a team that obviously helps you do that. For anyone yeah. that's listening that's in sort of account management, client management at whatever level, can you just give us give them maybe just one or two tips then in terms of account, you know, what makes a good account management? My number one yeah. tip is to show the client that you are so passionate about their business, right? That it literally could be your it could be your money. You get as annoyed or annoyed before they get annoyed if something hasn't quite gone to plan. Yeah. You, you know, I mean, I, I've done this. I've walked down Fifth Avenue on my holidays, right? And um, and I've seen, I don't know, I saw Coca-Cola, the Coca-Cola head office, and I just took a picture of me like that and sent it to the Coca-Cola yeah. client, right? Saying, yeah. think, always yeah. thinking about <laughs> you. And yeah. it just, it takes a few seconds. Same when I was, I mean, anyone that knows me knows I'm never going to be home decorating myself. <laughs> Uh, was looking at paint colours for someone else to do it. You yeah. know, in in um, home base and kind of like picked up two Dulux tins, took a picture of me with the Dulux tins and sent it to the Dulux client yeah. saying, can't decide between <laughs> Jasmine White and Orchid White, <laughs> which he was then right, I'll get my chief designer onto you and you can work it out together. So it's yeah. like having a passion, knowing you have a yeah. passion. And then the other thing is, is really um, getting the basics right. So like no errors on plans, no, yeah. just knowing that all the, all the basics are done, but generally passion, care, and being that person's person, if you yeah. like, is the most important yeah. thing. Good advice. You've worked on lots of pictures, Claudine, I'm sure over the years, probably hundreds, if not thousands. Yeah. Um, do you have a favourite pitch that you've worked on? have a worse pitch that I've worked on, on. Give me the worst pitch. <laughs> the worst pitch yeah. was we were pitching for a piece of business that we already had. Right. I had a really, really great relationship with the chief marketing officer. Right. So felt comfortable and, and his team, to be fair. And the guy from our side that was running it, that was no longer... I have to say, at Mediacom after this, um, he, um, he, I went away on holiday and when I came back, it was just an absolute mess, like a real mess. So I had to try and pull it together. And his big idea, I kept saying, I don't really think that, that this is right for them. I just don't feel that they're going to, he, he was adamant that they yeah. were going to love it. So I thought, okay, so we go into the pitch and that his opening lines, I could see just really annoyed the clients. But when he put up, he went, and here is our big idea. Da -da. And like on the screen came right. Lorraine Kelly, right? And she was like, hello, Anthony, Darren. Da -da 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 -da. And I could see their faces falling. And when she finished her piece to camera, yeah. the client went, you pitched that to me three weeks ago and I told you then that absolutely not would we be doing something like this. It's not on brand. It's not. And yeah. I was like, what? What? You pitched it three weeks ago. So anyway, that, um, that, that, was, that was one of the worst pitches I had. Right. I think that, but one of the best pitches I had, which I loved, was working at the time IPC magazines. So my bit that I was doing was the home decors, the home magazines, home interest magazines. And we decorated out the, um, the whole of our meeting room in kind of mirrors because we said, um, you know, your house is a reflection of yourself. Yeah. Therefore, we did it. It wasn't so well thought out because there were mirrors on the floor. And obviously, most of the clients were women that were coming in in skirts. And so we were suddenly like, oh, no, this isn't really a clever idea. But actually, they loved it. They thought it was fantastic. And I really enjoyed I loved the client as soon as I met them. And so I really enjoyed working on that. So I think and I was working with a great team. 
yeah so i think what you're saying in terms of pictures be creative as well yeah not just you know simple powerpoint looking at a screen that sort of thing so i also on. think a very very big thing about pictures dan is that the team our team yeah. are seen to like working with each other and are cohesive yeah. and you know because sometimes pitching is very very stressful yeah. right you you it is really stressful and sometimes it can be very you know a lot of people as you can imagine in leadership roles are very driver orientated sure. do this do this i need this back tomorrow right and actually one of the tricks is come on guys we're in this together sitting on the same table maybe going out for a drink after work so that when you come into the pitch the number one thing the client has to think is I really want to work with them yeah. right I really and I remember yeah, it they'll get on our, as well yeah. yeah yeah it happened on our Wrigley's account we won we won the business many years ago and I remember saying to the client why did you appoint us and he said, because you just had such camaraderie yeah. between you that I wanted to be part of right. that. And I just yeah. really enjoyed it. So I think it tells if you're a team that get on well. And sometimes you can interject and take the mickey out of each other a little bit. You know, um, that's really important. And that comes back to the continuity of staff that you mentioned, right? Because so you yeah. get that naturally, don't you? Because if you've worked with people for a number yeah. of years, rather than having to chop and change staff that are coming in, uh, I guess it's like running a team, whether it's a football team yeah. or whatever. You know, if you've worked together for a while, it's going to show. Yeah. Um, moving on to the last six months, I don't want to dwell on it too much, all the negativity, but in your role as obviously chief client officer and looking after clients, how difficult has it been? <laughs> your face drops. Because <laughs> you My like going out and talking. About, yeah. Exactly. My whole role. I've always been a face-to-face -face yeah. person. I yeah. don't yeah. like the phone. I just don't like the phone. Even when yeah. I was younger, yeah. you know, I'd be like, yeah, hello, how are you? Goodbye. <laughs> I don't like it. Right. I love people. I love being in front of people. I love the social element of having a, a drink, having a yeah. meal, or even in a meeting, because I always, I do, I talk a bit of rubbish, like, to begin with, you know, and I think, I don't know whether it puts people at ease or whether sometimes yeah. these really senior clients think, oh, it's a breath of fresh air to be yeah. talking about yeah. the undoing that was on TV the other yeah. night, you know, yeah. normally I'm talking straight in about business. Yeah. So when this first happened, I came home and I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? My whole job is going out and about and yeah. like seeing her. What am I going to do? And I spent probably about two days just literally staring at my screen, almost in tears. Yeah. And then I thought, okay, well, we have to adapt, which is what we what every client had to do. Yeah. So we used to do, or we, we and hopefully I'm putting it in the business plan for next year. We used to do these dinners where we would get about 20 clients together, 15 to 20 clients together. Because one of the things that our clients said is one of the great things about media Com is we have this huge plethora of clients and they actually like to learn from different industries, different sectors, what they're doing about yeah. things. So when I started talking to a couple of the clients early on, they would say to me, like DFS would say to me, you know, well, what are, um, what are, uh, I don't know, boots doing or what are these people doing and, and I thought you know what I'm going to do a virtual client hangout <laughs> can't do it for 20 because it doesn't really work on zoom and obviously you learn all these things as sure. you're going along yeah. so we had like four of us we had Kate the CEO myself Sue the chief transformation officer and Jeff the chief strategy officer we'd have about six clients on the on the um zoom call teams call and we would have, Sue would give a bit of a state of the nation. Jeff would tell people what consumer confidence yeah. was like and what the consumers were thinking. And then I'd go around each client and they'd all talk about how their business is doing, what they've, how they've adapted, what they're doing. And then they'd all just talk. And that just went brilliantly. Yeah. Um, so we've done those every month and we've just had to come up with really different ways to engage with them so last was it last not last night the night before I did for the first time ever I was really nervous because I just thought I don't know how this is going to work we did a virtual wine tasting for our client yeah so um we sent them the bottles of wine through we sent them some lovely cheese yeah. and crackers 
we all got on Zoom at like six o'clock. It was yeah. six we had this amazing sommelier that took us through the wines oh, she engaged yeah. us all yeah. <laughs> um by talking to each one individually kind of just said what was your favorite childhood meal when you were growing up yeah. and i mean the feedback from the clients was yeah. absolutely brilliant so it was very hard and um I would not wish to do it like that again. And hopefully, you know, when Coming the news of the vaccine came out, I was literally <laughs> doing a little jig around my uh, lab. You know, I could go out again. Yeah. Well, so again, it's being creative, isn't it? Coming up with an idea that yeah. instead of it just being, I guess, a bit like this, you know, one-on-one or just three people, as you say, chatting, you've actually created yeah. something that's interactive. What is your favourite, ch- what was your favourite childhood meal? <laughs> well, I asked my mum that because I'd forgotten because... You know, I was I was a very um, I was a very fat child. So, you know, I was fed like lettuce leaves and stuff like that. So I think any food that wasn't like that, I just love. Yeah. But my mom, my mom said to me, which is still probably the same today, roast chicken. I was oh, it's a bit boring. But I think I think maybe it was, you know, I don't know. My grandma used to make this like amazing. Oh. My husband thinks it's disgusting, but this amazing <laughs> like sweet and sour pickled herring and oh. i used to love that as a child but <laughs> roll mops, so I think i'll go cool. with i'll go no not roll mops, it wasn't it was like a no. sweet i'll go with um i'll go with roast chicken can't beat a bit of roast chicken exactly um, future for the industry or f- i guess your clients um what are they telling you at the moment at this stage you know hopefully there's green shoots as they say what's their views on, on going forward well i think their views have been massively um improved and and they there is much more optimism now because of the vaccine i mean the one thing they've all had to do is they've had to accelerate their digital transformation probably two years earlier than they would have done and i would say some have succeeded brilliantly and some are still lagging way behind yeah so got to really get to that because it's quite interesting I don't know if you have found it personally but I've certainly found that buying doing online shopping my experience of that has really changed my opinion of a brand so if I get a good experience I'm always going back to that person yeah if I've had a difficult or like annoying experience I won't go back yeah well because there's so much choice right as consumers so it's the same as going to a restaurant or to somewhere else you know you get one you get one chance yeah you don't need to give them a second chance no I I think you're right you know in my road I don't know where you live I live in Totteridge yeah delivery van off delivery van (laughs) dropping off this and that I've literally in the last six months obviously whether it's a cardo or waitrose or dpd or raw mail yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah i know exactly what the person over the road how, how they eat and what they yeah. wear <laughs> yeah you do your research through that so yeah you talk about um i guess digital and digital disruption and obviously over the years you've seen it um especially planning uh, you know planning and all the different tools you've got so what challenges does that represent to brands? Is that is the biggest one, you know, making sure that the customer service is on point? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think, you know, I can't tell you how many. Right. So if you say you have live chat. Yeah. Have live chat. Right. Don't have a bot yeah. that is answering you that, yeah. or chat that says we'll come back to you in 48 hours. Right. If you say. I'm going to email you, then email, right? Don't have to, I've spent my life chasing, where's the email that was sent? And then phoning people, right? You know, those companies that say, we haven't got anyone to take the call, and then the phone goes dead. It's like, oh my God. You know, it's now been nine months. And in that time, there there are some other companies that are absolutely brilliant at it, right? Should have got things together and um but yeah the ones that like don't answer the phones yeah. and you're left on for half an hour with it yeah. just ringing and ringing and ringing is um yeah. can you give us an example of of some no. i mean a positive example oh a positive example yeah of a, uh, something that you interact with that you think you know a brand that, that that's done it very well over you know this period 
tell you what, I think it's more yeah. individuals actually. Yeah. Right? So I think it's more individuals, like people that I follow on Instagram. Okay. So I'll give you a couple of examples. There are a couple of makeup artists. Yeah. Who obviously their whole business whilst we were in lockdown, they had no business because yeah. they couldn't go face to face with people and do their makeup. Uh-huh. Um, it's slightly different in the second lockdown, but definitely not in the first lockdown, they weren't allowed to. And how they pivoted kind of their um their job in a way to do online tutorials or kind of just advice on skincare and makeup I thought that was really clever yeah. and actually their followers are now through the roof and so they'll be able to kind of capitalize on that as well yeah. um and it's hard work you know I think it must be hard work to be on camera filming yeah. yourself all the time coming up with new things and yeah especially you're young feeling happy with your look without having to edit it a million yeah. times well, I, I don't bother i should probably put makeup on <laughs> i don't bother <laughs> I don't it's bother a certain age you can't but it's interesting yeah i think you're right <clears throat> there's a lot of individuals and in the events industry that i work in the operations uh or the supply chain of freelancers has been decimated but a lot of them have then had to sort of change roles or change industries yeah. and there's been lots of examples of coming up with different business ideas, you know, people coming up with small businesses. So I think some a positive to come out of this is innovation. Yeah. Both but on an individual level and a, and a company level as well. Would you say that? Yeah, definitely. But I mean, yeah, yeah look at, I mean, look at um, Tesco, you yeah. know, we literally within days of, of it happening, yeah. got a new ad out explaining to people how the queuing system worked, yeah. how, what the department two weeks apart, what um, the mask meant, everything. It was brilliant, right? It was so clear and it was brilliant. And they got their online shopping sorted. And, you know, they were just, they were just on it. Yeah. They were brilliant. So in terms of, just finally, in terms of a media agency world, in terms of media spend, what's, what's your view of the sort of recovery curve? Do you see a sort of... A, a boom for 21 or late 21 what what's your what the client's telling you i see a boom for 21 yeah. i see it being better than we might have thought it was in april of this year right but, you know, still a lot of our clients have lost a lot of money sure and um need to kind of save a lot of money yeah. as well yeah so i think look i think some will will get back to relative normality. They're definitely spending more than they told us they would spend back yeah. in probably May, June, but it won't be the same. Yeah. As, uh, it won't be the same as like 2019. Sure, so it could be a couple of years before they get back to yeah, spending so. levels. Okay. I think, listen, I'm optimistic for next year because sure. I do think the vaccines start rolling out, right? It will take months before everybody gets it as well. You know, yeah. you have to wait three weeks between one shot and the second shot anyway. It must be a logistical nightmare to try and uh, to try and sort out. Yeah, how do you fancy managing that campaign? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> yeah. well, I am very organised, but I've got. <laughs> um, yeah, it will be and, difficult. You know, and I think that once that's done, and the travel industry, because I think everyone's just gagging to go on holiday, yeah. and people are really scared of doing yeah. it. And you know, once that gets back and running, it will be yeah. so much. Um, moving on to The Apprentice briefly. Yeah. How did you get involved? So the first time yeah. I got involved was um, one of their tasks that they were doing was they had to launch. It was when free magazines just came into the market or yeah, freemium, yeah. I should say. So <laughs> shortlist. Yeah. So Mark Sitar launched Shortlist magazine. Yeah. And um, the production company rang him and said to him, we've got a task, we'd like our candidates, our teams, to come up with a free magazine. I remember that episode. Yeah. Help. Yeah. And he said, yeah, great, fine. And then they said to him, so the um, the objective is to sell as many ad, ad um, sites, as many ad pages as they can for as high a price to advertising agencies. So who would you suggest we go to as our judges we need three different agencies so they said um mediacom yeah i was the group press director at the time so claudine collins at mediacom 
John Williams at Cara because he was at Cara and John Maloney at Maxis. Yeah. So the three of us were chosen. So anyway, they came in and um, we did our bit. They pitched to me. I did the usual. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Yeah. I just didn't even remember the front <laughs> cover. Right? It was. Yeah. Uh, I still think it was like one of them was an over fifties magazine. Yes, I do remember that episode. Yeah. I would just like to say, right? I am over fifty, and they called it. it they called it hip replacement, right? But in inverted commas, the I hip, remember. Like I remember. Was, I was yeah. like, anyway, so I still remember it. So that was that. And then about a week after I'd done that, I was in a restaurant and Alan Sugar was in there. And well, um, coincidentally, I, just yeah, to, yeah. coincidentally, and I've yeah. never met him before in my life. I didn't know anyone that knew him. I didn't know him. Yeah, yeah. But me being me, just went over to him and said, oh, hello. I said, I just thought I'd come and say hi and introduce myself. I'm Claudine. I did your task yeah. last week. And he just went, right. <laughs> and I thought, yeah. Okay. And I went, you know, the advertising task. And he went, yeah. Yeah. Went, okay. Well, anyway, just thought I'd say hi. And I kind of walked back to my table, a bit like tail between my yeah. legs. And then it was a weird thing, like Karen Brady walked in and Nick Hewer, who were the two yeah. that I've been with. I've known Karen since I was 17 anyway. So they walked in and said, I'll oh, come and say hello to Alan. I was like, I've no, been there, done no, that. No, been there, not going back there again. Yeah. Um, and then it just so happened that there were a couple of people in the restaurant that I knew and Alan knew. Yeah. And uh, one of whom was actually Piers Morgan. So I right. think he said to Karen, who is she? Yeah know everyone and she said oh she runs the biggest ad agency in the UK and then the next morning he phoned me well he texted me and said hi it's Alan Sugar here Uh, I had to look at your rushes from last week uh, last week's episode you're really good really good Uh, wondered if we can meet up for a coffee Um, something I want to discuss with you how about four o'clock at the Mayfair Hotel on Thursday and (laughs) Back and said, No, sorry, can't do. Got a client meeting, I can do Tuesday at 11. For you, and, yeah. <laughs> and he went, All right. And we met up, and he said to me, um, You know, you you look like you could be a bit of a tough cookie, and you know, do you do a lot of interviewing? And I said, Well, yeah, a lot. Yeah, I've got the company. Um, and so I got the gig doing that. Amazing. Obviously, I'm and the nice one on it, though, Dan. Or what's that? You're the nice I'm one. The nice one. <laughs> I just remember your face popping up. I was like, I know her. <laughs> you didn't see me. No. Um, reality TV program or business program, or is it a fusion of the two? Because we only see we only see bits of it, right? So, well, it right. You know what? It's a fusion of the two, actually. But yeah. the truth is, the real people that have succeeded, and he yeah. has had a lot of people succeed are proper business people, right? And they go on it for the right reasons. Okay. So like Ricky Martin, Mark Wright, Leah, who, um, Dr. Leah, yeah. you know, they are all people that have done brilliantly all because they, they have had a business idea and they want to make it work. So yeah. all credit to them. And for that, it is a business yeah. program. And that's what Alan wants it to be a business program because that's what he's investing in. Yeah. You then get the people that go on there just so you do get yeah, yes, chances, yes, actually, that, yeah. that is my role right so of the four interviewers yeah we each get given a role so you will probably notice i don't delve into the business plans sure. because claude and um claude and linda right they go into the business plans Mike goes a bit to their background and their education and kind of tries to find out that they're liars or lied on this but my thing is to find out if they are truly serious about about the opportunity or whether they really want to Uh, and there's I think that um, I've rarely been wrong I have there have been times when I said to Alan you haven't really got many people to choose from here so it's the best of 
first yeah but, and, and be aware of what they're like because I think they're yeah. a bit of a party boy and it was proved to be right but um but no I would say that you know a lot of them have been incredibly successful yeah. business people yeah well, I interviewed, I said, Lee McQueen the other day. Yeah. He he predated you, 2008, yeah. but obviously he's gone on to be, well, he was really? telling me, you obviously worked with Simon Sugar, Alan Sun, and obviously Lord Sugar as well. Yeah. And it's interesting because he always wanted to do his own thing. So I was talking to him about, yeah, he said, look, that was really successful, but it wasn't mine. And I had a passion for people and I wanted to go back into recruitment. So he, yeah. he took that leap um, to do that. In terms of interviews, um, what makes a good and like it'd be interesting. I don't know whether you've had to do interviews for MediaCom over Zoom and whatever during this time. If you've got some advice for someone that's going for an interview at any level, what are the tips? What are the, what are the sort of best tips you can give them? I think kind of preparation. You know, I mean, it comes down to the usual thing of preparation. Yeah. Right? So prepare properly. Know about the job. Know about the um, the company. I would try and get. Um, I would try and get to know a little bit about the person that's interviewing you as well. Yeah. yeah. It's always a bit of an ego boost and it's nice when someone says to you, you know, Oh, um, obviously I was researching for yeah. this. Yeah. I came across you in an interview and you said this, you know, do you still feel that way? Blah, blah. You think, Oh, good on you. You've actually. Yeah. Got to do and something. that doesn't take long to do right at this day and age, you could just Google well, something and that's exactly. it. Yeah. 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 But, the, but the main thing is the main thing is really is just to be yourself sure uh, because i think if you try and put on an act it really it, it just doesn't work right it just doesn't i think you have to be yourself you have to um show that you know what you're talking about say why what you think you can bring to the um to the role and to the company right. but what you want out of it as well um, and I think, yeah, it's really difficult on Zoom. And and if you can, you know, try and have a laugh. You know, just try and try yeah. and put some humor yeah. in there at the yeah. right time. And um, just finally on The Apprentice, do you have a favourite moment to date? Or favourite interview even, maybe? I think um, there was someone, what was she doing? What was her business plan? Her business plan was about makeup. Yeah. And I think I said to her, so, and her, her plan was she knew every product and she was going to be selling them and did well, the rest of it. So I said to her, have you got your makeup bag on you? And she said, yes. I said, well, empty it out in front of me. And she did. And I said, okay, what brand is that? What is it? And she, she just didn't know. She was just, right. sitting there. I said, oh, really? If you're going to do something about makeup, if you're going to yeah. say something, about makeup, then you have to know what you're yeah. talking about. Or I think the last season there was a girl called um, Camilla who had come up with this um, nut milk idea, which was a yes. very good idea. Yeah. But oh my god, her imagery that yeah, she. I was remember. <laughs> and it was kind of like when I. <laughs> And when what does that say to you? I just yeah. like she went, Do you think she did that on purpose or she was uh, just a bit naive? <laughs> we don't know. I don't know. No comment. Don't know. <laughs> um Apprentice going forward, it's coming back next year. Is that right? I think I yeah. saw Yes, yes. I spoke to when I interviewed I interviewed Alan yeah. a few months ago. Yeah. And he said to me, you know, we tried every way possible to yeah. make it work this year but we couldn't think of a way to make it covid friendly yeah. that would um that would work he said yeah. because the whole program is about interacting with people pitching to people doing this that, and the other so i think now they have come up with a way of um making it covid friendly yeah. because um yes he's asking for people to apply sure are you going to be involved he told me I would be. The, <laughs> the only thing is, they only give us the date for our filming about right. four week, four to five weeks before. And it really depends. I've got a lot of weddings this year and functions that have been right. put back from last year. Sure. So I wouldn't miss a friend's wedding. 
to do it, even though I would love to do it. So the, the idea is, yes, I'll be involved. Yes, I'd love to do it. And hopefully it will fit in at sure. the time I can. I think he's in Australia doing The Apprentice over there at the moment, isn't he? he? Is, yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Um, any further designs on getting involved in more TV stuff or is, is that sort of it? <laughs> I don't know. Everybody keeps... I'm a celebrity, me. maybe. See, oh, you go on that one at the moment. <laughs> no way. I do Strictly. Would you? Definitely do Strictly. I feel sorry for the guy that would have to pick me up and swirl me around, <laughs> but I would definitely do it. Yes. Um, no, I mean, no, look, I'm no. not celebrity. Would I like to do it? I don't know. I might like to do things like, I mean, I'm very opinionated when it comes to things. So, like the, the papers, like the paper sure. review. Or yeah. stuff like that. I get asked all the time to go on Piers Morgan and Susanna to debate yeah, a yeah, topic. Yeah. But whatever topic that is, it especially when I'm kind of working with 1,300 different people, yeah. I was always going to get myself into trouble if yeah, I went careful. one way or yeah. the other way. Yeah. So um, I've always generally had to say, no, I can't, I can't yeah. do that. That's a fair point. Um, <clears throat> just finally, a couple of other bits of conscious of time. Your charity work, yeah, which I which I, I guess is very important to you. Yeah. Um, can you bring that to life? What your work, who you're working with at the moment? Um, yeah. Yeah. So worked on lots of charities yeah. over the years. Think um, very difficult for me to ever say no because I think all yeah. charity, most charities are just amazing. So you know, in the past. I've worked very actively on Rays of Sunshine Children's Charity. I've worked for the Variety Club Children's yep. Charity. Um, I've done the Laws Taverners, um, which is also uh, for disabled children. Um, and probably will continue with the Laws Taverners next year if their event carries on. But the one that I'm kind of most passionate about and probably most involved with now is Cancer Research UK. Okay. So it's, uh, I'm on their corporate board. Yeah. So we look for corporates to kind of like team up with them. They've had a very, very difficult yeah. year this year. It's really very upsetting in that, you know, there was a stat that said more people will die of cancer and lack of treatment yeah. and lack of kind of research than people die of COVID yeah. because yeah. of this. So, um, so I'm working with them at the moment. Um, it's especially poignant for me, um, especially poignant that you should mention it today, because today at two o'clock, I have should have my final oncologist appointment where I get the five year all clear from cancer. Wow. Yeah. Well, congratulations, if I can oh, say that. Big day. Thank wow, you. I, I wasn't um, aware. OK. Yeah. And so, Amazing. yeah, so, and so I want people, <laughs> I want people, you know, I want everyone to survive yeah. cancer and I want to yeah. do my bit. And I think I've had a very, very lucky life. I've always believed this actually, since I was 19, when I started charity work, I just truly believe that I've been very blessed. And I've had a lucky life and I want to give back and I want yeah. to help other people that haven't. And, you know, there are other charities that come up. And I think, oh, I'd love to help them. It's yeah. just a matter of timing. Like, you know, I've got yeah. three, I mentor three people. I sponsor one. Sure. I've got my day job. I've now got family. Um, you know, it's hard to do. Exactly. That's why I decided this year. <coughs> yeah. I'm Cancer Research UK. Um, and I'm helping them with that. Yeah. Well, what a day. I feel privileged to talk to you today. Yeah, what a day. <laughs> Good for you. Um <laughs> Are there parallels to be drawn with sort of your work? I mean, that's work as well, but between helping to run a charity or a, a campaign for a charity and your sort of day job? Well, yeah, I mean, it is a business. Yeah. It is a business. You know, the CEO of Cancer Research, Michelle, sure. you know, she's one of the top CEOs kind of in the country. She's incredible, yeah. but she's got to run a business and they're, yeah. you know, the chief marketing officer, the same. So, um, yes, it's very, you know, it's it's very much that the money they get in, they're able to do more research. Yeah. Right. Less money they get in, the less research they can do to to help kind of uh, yeah. prevent and cure cancer. Um, so it's, it's very much a business. Yeah. And events form, I guess, a big part of what they do. 
So yeah, it's it. a coffee morning or a big fundraiser and save yeah. for Razor Sunshine. And as you said, they haven't been able to do that this year. Has that sort of proven and demonstrated how important events are? And what, what's your yeah. sort of view? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. look, they weren't able to do the race for life. They weren't yeah. able to do kind of like there's so you know they they have a annual fundraiser every year. Uh, the Emerald and Ivy Ball that Ronan Keating kind of puts on. Yeah. They weren't able to do that. Um, you know, events are really important, and it really is a way of getting everyone together under kind of one cause. Yeah. And hopefully, we'll be able to do that again, kind of going forward. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've got a few friends that are big event planners and it was it's devastating yeah. to hear them, yeah. like devastating to hear about their businesses and what's yeah. happened. Um, but, you know, inherently, I think the majority of people are social people. Yeah. And I say the majority, not everybody, but the majority are, you know, I like to get together. I like to I like to I like to go to events. Yeah. What's your key learnings for yourself as an individual over the last six months? What sort of maybe not necessarily new skills, but what was, what, what's this proven to you? Um, that I'm more adaptable than I thought I was. Yeah. So I can work from home. I quite yeah. like working from home. Yeah. Um, I think my technology um my technology knowledge has definitely gone up, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Has it been a period of reflection on certain things? Because uh, people I talk to, you know, because they've had more time with themselves. Totally. Yeah. I mean, totally. Yeah. But I also have to stop myself because I think had I've gone with the reflections that I've had during that, I would be sitting here with a puppy. Yeah. I, I would have moved house. Yeah. I would have bought a place in Spain. I would have done yeah. all of that. Right. Yeah. And, and my husband's like, just hold a fire. You know, you are a girl that likes to go into London, go out for dinners, see your clients. You know, that is your, your life. We like to go on holiday that might come back, right? Just hold fire on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's right because, you know, hopefully next year, you know, I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to going back into the office. I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. everyone. I'm looking forward to going out for a drink after work. If I had to then think I've got to get home for the puppy or <laughs> yeah. I've got to do this or I've got to do that, you know, it, yeah. and we kind of agreed at some point that I'm sure that will happen yeah. and I'm desperate because my sister's just got a puppy and I absolutely my, my two daughters not. are nagging us to death but there are no puppies around at the moment no <laughs> what you want you want. Man, there are no puppies around. no no we, well seriously we've lit we've uh we're going on a tangent but we I've had to email 50 different people and they're all talking about the spring because that'd be able to breed and all sorts and also the price have gone from like 700 quid to four grand yeah pricing is ridiculous supply and ridiculous. demand for you yeah you can go to your dog's home yeah well actually you could do that yeah Nordine, i've got some time i just want to thank you so much Pleasure. um it's been really good catching up with you hopefully we'll do it again and today okay. we wish you the best of luck thank you and it amazing you know and hopefully um many happy and healthy years ahead Thank you very much, Dan. It was lovely to see you. Thank cool. you for having me.